Mini Minerva, providing enrichment and inquiry in a rapidly changing world. Hello, my name's Rosie and I'm going to be talking to you today about the Maya. I am an archaeologist and historian and I study the Maya every single day. Archaeologists usually dig up temples, buildings and objects and that's how we learn about the Maya and historians tend to read about the Maya and that's how they learn about the Maya. Okay, let's go. An archaeologist is someone who looks at objects to tell us more about the past. These objects are often buried and we have to dig them up to find out more. This is called excavating. Rosie has presented and excavated on lots of sites around the world, including in Italy and Belize, but now she focuses on the Maya civilization, who she will be speaking about today. When and where did Maya live? Where did the Maya live and when did they live? The Maya emerged as a culture about 4,000 years ago. And they live in North America, in the green here. So this is Canada, this is the United States, and this is Mexico. And over here on the right-hand side is a zoomed in part of Central America that I've circled right here. So in Mesoamerica, which is a part of Central America, we have Mexico that I'm highlighting here. We have Guatemala that I'm highlighting here, Belize, Honduras, and El Salvador. These are all modern day countries that make up Mesoamerica and these are all places that the ancient Maya lived and that the modern Maya still live. What sorts of buildings did they have? This is a set of pictures that I took in Tikal in Guatemala, the modern country of Guatemala. This is one of the highest temples on the left hand side here and on the right hand side you can see a big town square. The town square is where a lot of celebrations happened, a lot of markets happened and the town square was surrounded by these big temples. These big temples were really important to the Maya. Sometimes you had burials um, of big, uh, important people like kings and queens. Who led the people? These kings and queens lived uh, in and around the, the central square. And here we can see a queen on the left hand side and she is getting ready to talk to a god. How does she do that? So there's a priest on the left hand side over here and he is holding up a torch with lots and lots of fire and she is running a line of thorns. You can see here through her tongue and that means that her tongue bleeds the blood drips onto paper down here, which is in a basket. When the blood has dripped onto the paper, they light the paper and the basket on fire. And from the fire, from the smoke, comes a big serpent god. And the queen talks to the serpent god and finds out what she needs to do to make sure that her people are living well. On the right hand side, on this pot, this piece of pottery. There is a different ruler. This is a king who is turning into the maize god, and I'll talk about maize a little bit later. This piece of, uh, this vessel, this ceramic, was found in many different pieces. You can see the lines here, these cracks all along here show that it, this piece of pottery, this pot, was found in many different pieces. Uh, my friend and myself found this pot in the ground. We had to dig it up. We found it. It was very dirty. You have to be very, very careful when you find it because it's in lots of different pieces. We recorded where we found it. And then we cleaned it, took it back to the lab and put it back together. And that's when we were able to see this uh, king turning into a maze god. My friend who was in charge that day was Britt Davis. He's a pretty important guy. So, what did they eat? 
the maize, the maize from the maize god. Maize is corn. Corn is very, very important to the Maya. They eat it every single day. And it is believed that the earliest Maya, the first Maya people were made from corn, that the gods made a dough and formed the dough into people and then baked it and breathed life into these people and that the Maya now eat corn to sustain themselves. There's lots of different types of corn. We know about yellow corn. It's our most uh, common kind of maize in the UK, but there's also purple corn, red corn, orange corn. There's so many different varieties and they're so important to the Maya. On the left hand side here, we have chocolate. The Maya did not eat chocolate. There were no chocolate bars. Instead, they drank chocolate. Chocolate was very thin. The Maya didn't have milk. They didn't have cows. And so they drank their chocolate uh, with a really foamy texture. It was very loose texture. And in order to make the foam, you would pour it from a really high height and that would get lots and lots of air into it and that would make it super foamy. The Maya also didn't have sugar, so instead they sweetened it with honey. What did they wear? These are two pictures of modern day Maya people who are weaving traditional ways that the ancient Maya, their ancestors, used to weave. Archaeologists don't find looms and they don't find clothing because the clothing and the looms are made of really, really fragile materials that rot and decay and they melt away in the ground. So we can't find those. Instead, we know about ancient Maya weaving, one, through the traditional methods that have been passed down that the modern Maya use, and two, from images, so from paintings on pottery and from carvings in stone. What materials did they use? These are the tools that the Maya used. The Maya didn't have metal. Instead, all of their tools were made from stone. On the left here, the black stone is obsidian. It is a volcanic rock formed in layers. And when you hit this rock with another very heavy rock, one of the layers flakes away and leaves a really sharp edge. Obsidian is so sharp that modern day brain surgeons use it because it's so precise, it can cut in between the cells. On the right hand side here, you can see a different stone. This is chert or flint, and it's formed in the same way. It's formed in layers and you hit it to flake away that layer and create a really sharp edge. It's less sharp than obsidian, but it's still very sharp. The Maya used all of these as cutting tools. Now, this tan light gray flint clearly has some extra special parts to it. It's got these little areas, these semicircles, and that means that it's not a typical shape for a knife, for a cutting implement. So it seems very likely that this was used in a special ritual instead of daily use. How did they write and tell the time? The Maya had their own special form of writing. They had hieroglyphs. In order to make these hieroglyphs, there are lots of different images that made up one word. So you can see here, there's a part here, and there's a part here. These two separate parts make up one word. On the right here, this very colorful picture, is the first date in the Maya calendar that we know about. And it's 5,000 years ago, this date begins. On the left hand side, this is a piece of pottery. This is a pot, again, found in pieces. You can see where the cracks are. And it was put together and we found out that it's got the longest hieroglyphic script on a piece of pottery that we know about. What happened to the Maya? 
The Maya today. The Maya today are still around. They didn't disappear and they're just like you and me. Their culture has changed a little bit, but many people still celebrate in traditional ways in their ancient town squares. We are so grateful to Rosie for talking to us. Interested in learning more about the Maya? Think you could be 